couple of weeks ago, I did a rack of the week. I called the Imposa rack. This might be Imposa rack 2.0. But the point is to stay positive, work the problem, and think. I can't tell you how important it is to th- think. You've got to look at your options, walk around, look at your angles to the next shot and to other balls. And that's how you can get through difficult racks. So this one looks uh, pretty normal to start out with. I've got a few balls in the rack area. I've got a couple of balls that might be break balls, maybe not. But not, nothing, no alarm bells going off yet. And I've only got one shot, and that's this 12 ball in the side pocket. And I'm playing position for, to either shoot this ball or this ball next, which are really my break balls for the next rack. Um, I wouldn't have to. I could, I could shoot this ball in the corner and then shoot the one. But I, I want to open these up somehow. You know, there, there, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but I felt like this was a good opportunity that I'm not going to disturb this ball, and I'm just going to use a follow stroke on the seven, and that should open the balls. The cue ball should go forward to the bottom rail, and then I, I should be in good shape. And at first glance, yeah, all the balls opened up nicely. No, no two balls are touching. Everything looks pretty good. Then you take a little closer, like, and you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> this this is not good. I don't have a shot. Uh, I'm looking at it, and I've got a, there is a combination here on these two balls, but boy, you got to hit this 14 really thin from there. You got to almost shoot right at this angle to make that combination. And then I've got a long shot on this ball, or a long shot on this ball, or a delicate shot in the side. Wow, this is really. Okay, so what I finally decide is I'm going to back cut this four ball, and there's no controlling the cue ball there. I think the cue ball is going to hit this stripe, but I think the cue ball is going to go up table and back down, and we're just going to cross our fingers. When you make that decision, you've got to work the shot. Look at how much time I'm going to spend behind the ball before I get down, really looking at that angle. And as I said, there's no controlling the cue ball. There's no hitting the cue ball but anywhere but on top. Just make sure you pocket the ball. Now, after that shot, that's the second shot after the, uh, or third shot after the break shot. And all of a sudden, the rack front went from looking good to opening up to looking terrible in, in three shots. What am I going to break the rack with? The, the one? How am I going to clear the three out of there? What's my next shot? I mean, I guess I can shoot the eight. Oh, actually, there is no room to shoot. If I could shoot the eight, I would shoot it and go into these somehow. But there isn't. I've only got one shot. But after shooting this two, I'll have a shot on the six or the, f- or the five. So you've got to put in the work. Just make the ball. Make sure that you make the ball. Now, one thing I didn't notice from here, because I'm looking at this as a problem to solve. Yeah, I'm, but I'm walking around taking a look. You know, there's a possibility that I could shoot the six and go into these balls. But you don't have to have a follow-up shot. As I said, the eight ball doesn't go. You could split those, and they could each go their way, and the cue ball sits on the bottom rail. So I believe I'm playing. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I, what I'm doing is two-shot sequence, three-shot sequence, however you want to look at it. I want the cue ball to go into the one. Because I can use the three of the six. They're not great, but I can use them as break balls. I need to get the one out of there, and then I have a shot on the nine. So I'm playing with insurance. Now I also, I also was hoping that possibly when I drew that back, I would have a shallow enough angle that I could draw the cue ball into the 14. But I really didn't feel I did. So, you know, I, I called this uh, work and think. Just You can only handle one problem at a time. So put all your efforts into that. Work on it. And I didn't get it where I wanted. Wow. I, I didn't hit the one ball. I knocked the three up here. Luckily, the three ball is not on the rail. The three ball is accessible to the side pocket. So that's a good thing. But what do you do? Don't panic. I mean, this looks terrible, doesn't it? This is a terrible layout. Don't panic, though. Walk around. Put in the work. Think about what your options are. And what, what I decide is that, obviously, I could shoot the three ball now. That's one option is to shoot the three. And just holding the cue ball here, I'll have an angle on the five to go into these balls. That's not a bad play, but you're still leaving a problem here. So after looking at it, I realize, and the worst case scenario, I can either stop the cue ball in the rack or, or play position up table to shoot this ball in the side as my break shot. Now that's my fallback position. That's the, last, the, the worst case, but I'm hoping something better can happen. But what I, what I need to do, bef- instead of shooting balls off randomly, 
is deal with this because that's the last remaining problem. Work the problem. Think about what you're doing. So I pointed out earlier that I had noticed that this, this combination goes from this angle. So I'm going to play the nine ball, Break ball to get the cue. Yeah. Now I'm looking at it. That's where I want to be to shoot this combination. So the reason why I'm going to shoot the nine is to keep the three ball available for later if I need it. And by shooting the nine, you open up the pocket for the one. The one ball could also be a break ball if you put the get the cue ball right here. So I had, you know, don't panic even when things don't look that good. Just keep working the problem. Now from here, I'm checking to see do I have enough angle to spin into there and open those up. And I decide no, I'm going to go ahead and do the combination. The combinations. Uh, real high percentage. I just don't know where the cue ball is going. So I'm playing. I'm hoping the 14 ball leaves the area and the cue ball goes to the bottom rail and up. And at the worst case, I'll have an, a shot on the six up here. But you've got to just commit to the shot. What happened is the uh, cue ball double kissed the 14 over here. So I'm kind of back to a similar situation. But I look at it and lo and behold, the 14 ball is a workable break shot. So what am I doing? Walking around the table and looking. Work the problem. Think. So I, I, I look at it and I realize the 1 and the 14 are kind of similar break shots. And so I've got a key ball to get on the 1. And the 6 ball I just looked at goes past the uh, 14. So the 6 ball could be a key ball to get here on the 14. And I decide, you can tell I've already made my decision, I decide that. The 14 ball being lower is going to be better because if I can get the cue ball over here, then I'm going into the middle of the rack. From here, well, probably I can do the same, but I just think this is a better angle. Also, it might have something to do with the fact that I'm right-handed, so I'm going to play for this side. If, if you're left-handed and maybe you want to use the three ball as a cue ball to set up for this angle here on the one ball break shot, you've got to look at it and say, what's your shot right now? What are you going to shoot? You can shoot the five, but how are you going to get position on the six fourteen? So I just think it's better for that reason as well. What um, what I'm doing right here is playing position for the five. I got to I have to play the five next because the six is my key ball. The three ball goes in the side pocket. Yeah. So now I'm looking at the routes and I, I'm talking about it on the on the live stream. This was a live stream I did on my daily fifty. So there's two routes. You can go. You can try shoot the five. And try and just bring the cue ball across table, and you'd you'd want it to lay on the rail, inside. You don't want you don't want this angle on the three because the side pocket's in the way to to playing position for the six. So you'd want to lay the cue ball here. So there's some danger there. And what I decide is that the higher percentage play is to use inside English, and I'm going to go three rails around like that. And I'm not super confident where the cue ball is going to stop, but I know that if it's straight. If I get this angle, or straight, or even a little bit of this angle, from all those ways, I can get the cue ball over here on the six. Um, most likely, I figure if I end up here, I can go three rails around the top and get over here for the six ball. So I, there's a way more margin for error for, for this route. Now, but I take a look at it, and it's called working the problem. I'm looking at my angles for the three and the five. Probably and just really long, being comfortable sure. with my decision. So I just I pointed to two places on the table, and that's the position zone. My cue ball is likely going to have one of, you know, an angle somewhere in there. That's a huge position zone compared to this one. So that gives you the confidence to just put all your efforts into this shot. Get that cue ball over there. And just make it past the side pocket, and this is great. And I'm pretty much straight in, so... I can't just stay on the yeah, I'm, I, what I'm saying is I don't want this angle. I don't want straight. I got to be in between those two. Then I'll have the angle to punch over to the side pocket. So I've taken a good look at that, and all I can do is draw the cue ball straight back. Now I don't get it where I want. That's the extreme that I pointed to and said I don't want because that's too much angle. <laughs> um, and I'm dejected, but don't get too de too dejected. What do you, what can you do? Work the problem. Think about it. So now I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, I just pointed over here. I'm saying, okay, I can cut the six and just let the cue ball come all the way over here. Then I've got a thin angle to bring the cue ball off the rail into the stack. 
My other option that I'm looking at now is I can tap the six ball in. Um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, dead weight. So you're just using the weight of the cue ball to hit the six, and that's all the energy the six is going to get to make it to the pocket. And I'm going to use left English. I'm going to spin the six in. The cue ball is going to go forward, and then that left English is going to uh, kill it, kill the speed so it doesn't keep going forward and just make it come off the rail, and boom, then I have that angle. And um, I look at it I and decide, like yeah, I, I can do it. And so I, I literally said to myself at that point in the stream, yeah, I can do it. You're working the problem. It's a positive affirmation. And so you're bringing just positivity, positivity to the shot. So see that dead weight, left spin, and I've got the angle. Now the cue ball actually came out just a hair farther than I wanted, but it's still, if you, if you look at the ghost ball position, you know, that's an inside angle. Cue ball is going to have lots of energy on it. And uh, so you want to put some speed on this break shot so the cue ball stays on the tangent line. Where's the tangent line? It's something like this from the ghost ball. That's about 90 degrees. So I'm probably going to shoot a little bit below center, but not with any kind of a draw stroke. I want the cue ball to hit the rack and go forward probably this way. Uh, but a lot of you need some speed so that the cue ball stays on or above that tangent line. Yeah, you can tell I'm, I'm queuing just a little below center. Okay. And instead of going down, the cue ball hit the top side of the seven and, the, and then came up and then went back into the stack. It kind of bounced off from it a couple times. So you can tell I, was, I didn't have any draw or stun on that. Uh, great result. I can shoot the two. I can shoot the one. Small cluster in the middle of the table. That's how you get through those difficult racks that look hopeless. Just one shot at a time. But think about the whole layout. Think about, um, stay positive and think about all of your options. Walk around and look at your options. Stay positive and one shot at a time. Hey, I hope you like that. And thank you for watching. See you next week. Rack of the week.